Hi, I'm Rebecca Ropes and welcome to the Ken Woven channel. Today I'm very excited to bring you what I'm going to call my 10 home hacks part two. The other part is in another video, and here's what's really interesting to me about that video. One day, three years ago, it was just sort of a random, hey, let's just walk through my house before I do all my accessorizing for spring, and I'll show you 10 things I did when we moved into this house that I did on a budget and made a nice big impact in this home. That video, of all my videos, I have videos of some of the most gorgeous homes you've ever seen, my design work, and yet my 10 home hacks video is my most watched video of all time. And you know what the answer is? I know the answer because people have told me. It's relatable. So here today I'm gonna to take you through and show you 10 more creative things I did right when we moved into this house, actually some before we moved in, and a couple we did very shortly thereafter. All of these things are done on a budget. And you know why it's really important for me to do that today? Because tomorrow, this house is getting demoed. I mean, not the whole house, but all of the floorings going out, brand new floorings coming in, and guess what? If you've seen my first 10 Home Hacks video, what was the one room I hadn't done yet that I was so excited to do and wanted to do, but just hadn't? my kitchen. It's been 15 years, I think we're due for a kitchen remodel. What do you think, honey? Mm, he said yes. The kitchen is going away. Let me explain to you the first thing that I did in this house. I assessed the situation and what I had was a small enclosed dining room, a kind of medium-sized living room, and another small family room. So everyone gathered in the family room to watch television, and no one ever used the living room. I decided I was gonna reappropriate my spaces, and I turned what was my living room into a great room. That's where we would watch TV. And after that, I turned what was the family room into a dining room, which had a fireplace in it, and I loved that idea. You may remember from the first Home Hacks video, this area here, I explained to you how I opened up this space right here because I had a vintage window that I wanted to hang. But while I was opening up this wall and hanging a window, I was closing in another wall and hanging three more windows. The before photos will show you how this used to be completely open and this was the dining room. By adding drywall and pulling these in, I made them the size and the height, eight feet, of French doors and above the French doors, we put in three vintage windows that added architectural interest to the room. Of all the creative things I've done in this home in the last 18 years, I have to say this built-in unit that spans from one side of the room all the way over to this side, 28 linear feet, in fact. It's one of my favorite things for a variety of reasons. You know, with built-ins, it's the best way to use your space because you not only are using a little bit, maybe 24 inches of space on the floor, but you're going up, so you're maximizing your storage. <laughs> Now, if you're a member of the design sessions, you know all about this built-in. I did an entire episode just on built-ins, where I go into this built-in at great detail. If you're interested in knowing more about it, I suggest you join the design sessions and watch that episode, along with about 60, 70, 80 more that you have at your disposal, because it is an on-demand library available to you. Because this room was originally designed to be a dining room, there was a pass-through here from the kitchen. Once we turned it into an office, that was kind of unnecessary. And look at how much wall space I could actually do something great with. My husband had a huge collection of books, so it was obvious. An office, let's put it in a bookcase. So we came back with the same guy and we built this to match what was going on the other side. One of the challenges that I get asked about all the time on the design sessions and just with my viewers here on YouTube is how do you decorate around a vaulted ceiling? Let me tell you, it's not my favorite thing either. Here's how you decide. People say, how high do I go with this? Well, this is what's going to determine your height. 
Where the ceiling comes down, that is your lowest point. It's also the highest point of your built-in, and that's where you take your crown molding all the way across. In the first Home Hacks video, I talked a lot about this room that used to be the family room and turned into my formal dining room. Love the fact that I had a fireplace, but there were some funky things like the, the fact that I'm standing on the hearth all the way over here and some of the creative things I did. But what I didn't show you is that not long after we moved into this house, we actually changed all the doors and the windows on the exterior of the house. What I did here, take a look at the before pictures. This was a split window, so there was a divider down the middle of it. And I love the idea of a plate glass window. The reason you don't do a plate glass window is when you need air ventilation to cross breeze through your house. We never opened this window. And then I tried to create symmetry with my vintage chests that I did here by using a mirror on that side. But that's back to the other 10 home hacks video. I don't need to go there. You should go watch it if you haven't though. And the before pictures are gonna show you that this used to be a sliding glass door. I think it is very well worth the money anytime you can change a sliding glass door into a French door that opens out. A lot of contractors will tell you they don't ever wanna open things out because of the water that could be an issue. Just push. I have had these doors for 18 years and honestly, We've never had one issue with them. Over here, we did a single panel by itself. Why did we do that? At one time, this was broken into a separate piece and we had a doggy door. You don't have to build an army. There are gonna be people who watch this video who have never seen another video of mine and I just want you to know, I do have furniture. But I've been here for all this time. What I'm doing is I'm in the middle of a renovation. Now, on into this room. And let me explain to you something. I want you to see that we added on a laundry room. I've got all kinds of details about it, but I'm gonna use some old footage for you to see it. And you know why? Because right now, my laundry room is a makeshift kitchen. So it's a mess. Just trust me, watch this footage and you see what we did that was very creative to give us more room in this house. As you walked around here into the laundry room, you actually walked in just far enough to walk back out to the garage. This right here was the, the washer and dryer and the outside wall, the exterior wall finished right there. That was the extent of my laundry room. So here is the plan. You walk now into the front door around here into what was the family room and look at this. That doorway no longer has a door on it so it doesn't hit the one out to the garage, but look at all this new space. My sister and I used to have a laundry chute. How many of you, leave me a comment below and let me know if you know what a laundry chute is or if you've ever had one. That is an amazing thing to have because all of our bedrooms are upstairs. Now that's a pretty clever home hack, that laundry chute, right? Look here in this bathroom. You look at down here at these cabinets and you think, nice bathroom, right? Well, guess what? Here is the point of origin. How's that for a home hack? If you've been watching me for a long time, I know I keep saying that, but I've been here 12 years. So one of the very first videos I ever put up, I think it was like maybe number five or six, was Shara's bedroom video. And at that point, I showed you how we remodeled it and made it into something amazing for a teenage girl. But the point of this is the mirrors. If you have a question for me and it happens to be, Rebecca, how to my, make my room feel bigger? Number one, clean it. That's always a good idea. You'll be surprised at how much bigger your room feels. Number two, don't put too much furniture in it. And number three, if you can, put your mirrors floor to ceiling, wall to wall, and voila, double the size of your room. First home hack video, I showed you this 10 foot tall mirror in my entryway. 
This time, I just showed you the mirror in my kid's bedroom, and that was in both bedrooms. Well, what about in here? Let's take a look at what this bathroom looked like before. It had a soffit that went across. How many of you have soffits that go across your bathroom vanity? And what's inside of it? Fluorescent lighting, oh my gosh. So I had them take that out and then I had them put mirror all the way from the backsplash to the ceiling and on up on either side. Now there used to be medicine cabinets here. Well, I had to deal with the vaulted ceiling kind of going up at an angle, but you know what? I think it worked and I brought it out right to the edge of this, of the backsplash. No more extruding medicine cabinets. No, this is a glass mirror medicine cabinet that essentially goes away. All you see is the little rectangular cutout. You know that old saying, it's all smoke and mirrors? Well, here's another mirror hack for you. Cut off the little banjo thing here and brought the mirror all the way down behind the toilet. One other thing you might wanna pay attention to this is a, just a bonus that I'm throwing in. Do you notice how I took my crown molding in here and ran it right into the mirror? Doesn't it look like the crown molding just keeps on going? And it keeps that illusion of this being a much bigger space than it actually is. I had people saying, Rebecca, why did you put mirrors behind the toilet? I said, uh, cause I thought it looked good. And one guy said, well, if you're a man, you're standing up looking into the mirror while you're using the restroom. And I said, oh, well, you're welcome. I remember when we bought this house 18 years ago, it was the first house we ever owned. I was so excited to have a master bedroom that had double doors. So it wasn't long after we moved in that I changed out the doors. Not only did I change them to beautiful French doors that had frosted glass, and when I ordered these, I ordered them as tall as they could go. How did I determine the height? Well, I may have a vaulted ceiling in here, but out here, I've got an eight-foot ceiling. So as high as I could go, that's how high these doors were. So for my last and final hack, what do you think of my entry door? Kind of nice and impressive, right? For a typical tract home in Southern California. Trust me, these houses don't come with these doors, nor did we put this in when we first moved in. But eventually, over a few years, we were able to continue to do upgrades. This is one of the things we did. I've always loved either double doors that open, maybe one is stationary, but they look like you know symmetrical double doors, or a single door with matching side lights on the other side. Guess what I got? I got a door and a side light. So when I was able to redo my front door, I designed it myself. Doesn't it look symmetrical? I designed the door to actually have the side light connected to it. It looks like side lights. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, the whole door and the side windows open separately and that stays stationary. When I designed this door and I turned it in to the guy that was gonna build it, he was like, that's an interesting door because look, just the door itself, it is weird. It's got this thing here and those things there, but all together in the space, Symmetry, and in my opinion, for a relatively efficient cost, perfection. So what do you think? Were those creative ideas and things that I did? Maybe some of those things you could do in your own home. Do you know that all these years, 12 years I've been on YouTube, I've never done a whole house tour? Well, I'm going to because with a brand new kitchen, I've recently done my master bedroom and my master bath. The powder room is getting updated, all new flooring. Oh my gosh, it's gonna look amazing. And why is that important? Because the moment it's all finished, I'm putting my house on the market. I'm joining Shara and Tyler in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We are becoming Kenwoven. And before I forget, click the subscribe button and the alert me whenever a new video goes up. Because I'm telling you, we're headed into the best, most productive season of our life. 
not only with the things going on around here, but Christmas is coming like a locomotive. <laughs>